So Ivona, welcome back to the BVL podcast. Thanks for being on the program again. Thank you. Thank you for your invitation and thank you for uh, like coming over to my truck. I'm How so do you like it? I love it. I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed, to be honest. Oh, thank you. So when you. I pulled up, I immediately recognized it. So I was like, <laughs> that must be it. So I saw it from afar. It's all shiny. It's new. It's brand new, right? So it's, yes, it's brand new. Still there It's are still coils. oiled up and it's still, still like in, in wrapped up in some places. Still has got some foil on it. It's not that I'm going to keep it forever, but to be honest, it's just one week old and uh, I've been so busy recently and I believe that uh -huh. uh, unwrapping a uh, brand new truck uh, deserves some appreciation, time, happiness. And right now I'm just too tired. I just need to go home okay. and start all the paperwork uh, regarding mm -hmm. permits for this, uh, for this special transport. And then when I'm back after a couple of days rested, then I will be unwrapping and yeah. celebrating the moment. Yeah, just to set the scene. So we, we talked to each other about three months ago, sometime in June when we first met. Mm -hmm. This was online, so we didn't have a mm -hmm. chance to actually see each other face to face except mm -hmm. for the camera. Yeah. So now I'm really looking forward to seeing you in person and seeing you in your natural environment, which is fantastic. Oh, it is. So, it is. Uh, absolutely. Especially after all this time when, when people were, were living in, online and we are coming back to the time when we meet. Amazing. Things are back to normal. And you're just coming back from a show, right? You spent an entire <coughs> week at a bow messe, so like a yeah. construction trade fair, and you're yeah, showing correct. off your trucks. So tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing when you're not on the road and doing transport. You're also yeah. sort of doing your, your other part of the job, which, which we talk about today, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I just picked up this uh, truck last, last uh, week in Poland and then went to uh, Memmingen to Goldhofer factory to pick up the brand new trailer. Mm -hmm. And then I was off to, to Nordbaum Messe and my truck uh, was like a show truck on the Goldhofer uh, boot um, just to show, just to present itself, but uh, also like, like on the Messe, the potential clients or clients come and see and they're thinking about getting new stuff and there are always like new technologies. So it's always nice to come and touch and to see and ask questions how it works and so on and so forth. So yeah my truck was and it was quite funny because for the very first time i've seen so many children in my truck oh yeah of course yeah okay. because so many families uh, were coming that's with exciting the, for kids yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was a, so this 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 steering wheel has been touched <laughs> i guess like hundreds of times so many pictures uh -huh. like this and there were like two three four year olders and they were in so in, in such a great love and i thought that oh actually that's a great uh, great uh, way to try to you know uh, show the young generation mm -hmm. the truck so they may be falling in love and there was like little boy uh, that he came with his parents and her sister mm -hmm. and once he sat there it was like whoa <laughs> so amazing and I, uh -huh. I've seen I'm like hundred percent sure that that boy fell in love with the truck yeah you gotta get them early yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. i think he's gonna be a truck driver <laughs> because this is you know at the very uh, th i think this was the moment that you remember like forever yeah it was yeah. amazing that he sat here and there and here and there and then his father came so come on come on let's go I was like no <laughs> so nice <laughs> and what's this what's that it was asking so many questions it was cool. yeah so this is a great example of you straddling these two worlds right so la all of last week you were in your function as a an influencer mm -hmm. and someone who's sponsored by Volvo and by Goldhofer and mm -hmm. you're interacting with people and now you're sort of back on the road. So you spent a week in the hotel, <laughs> right? A nice, yeah. <laughs> nice environment, clean hotel and so forth. Yeah. Now you're back on the road. So just to set the scene here, we're meeting here on a truck stop mm -hmm. at a German autobahn. Yeah. Somewhere in between um, Neumünster where the trade show was in Hamburg. So just north of Hamburg. Um, is this a good place? It is a perfect place. It's a perfect place. It's a perfect place. There are quite uh, many uh, tracking places. You see there are some trees that give shadow, which is amazing. And there is a wall separating the autobahn from the parking lot. So it's that n not that noisy. And there is like a tankstelle, where is a coffee, where is like yeah. a little restaurant. There are showers, like sanifia toilets. So it's perfect. It's amazing. What else can so you have? Everything, so everything that you need is here. Yeah. How would you improve it? What is it here that what's here that that should be here that's not here 
Uh, more parking places. More parking. Like Ex three or four. But, times. but today we're fine. I'm looking around. It's like it's plenty of open spaces. But sometimes that it's morning. Sort of fluctuates. It's, it's Monday morning, so trucks are just uh, and, like starting yeah. off their headquarters, the yards, and it's gonna be completely different to them tomorrow morning. Is it very unpredictable? So, or do you have a feel for ah, it's, it's a Monday morning. I sort of know the routine and I know where I'm at. So, once I arrive there. I better be ready for a, a, an empty spot or mm -hmm. a crowded spot. How do, how do you know? Or is it sort of luck and random <laughs> randomness involved? Both. 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 Uh, at some like main corridors in Europe, you, you know that they are always busy. Or like when you, <laughs> when you, when you leave Poland Monday, uh, like around noon, direction west, you can be sure that all there will be like no spots available like anywhere. And when you go back from uh, west of Ger Germany, direction east, like on the first day evening, it's no places. Mm. And there are like some main corridors that are always busy, but uh, like at the beginning, at the end, certain direction, the direction there are overloaded and uh, we need to like enter industrial zones to, oh. to find like any spot. So you're running around and trying to find a, a proper spot. Yeah. Have you had times where you really couldn't, couldn't find anything? Oh, so many times, yeah. so many times, yeah. I've, and you just drive around trying to find yeah. just somewhere to park, <clears throat> yeah. which is hard, right? It's not, it's you can't just pick yeah. up any residential area or any other side of the street. You exactly. have to. Sometimes this is extremely, uh, extremely difficult and you end up... Uh, and you're like, tired, you're at a time where you should be taking your rest. And yeah, maybe... yeah, and all the Tahoe is like, right. <laughs> it's all like all the times, like driving time, working time, yeah. it's all over and you still have no, no even hope. Yeah, and and you can get, get in trouble, right? If you, yeah, yeah I've, I've been driving around for an hour to find a parking spot. Yeah, and it goes I remember, over a lot of time. Yeah. I remember what night this, this year when I was going to, I was driving 8-3 direction uh, Austria and it was like a bit of snow everywhere. Mm -hmm. So it took me like two hours driving from like truck stop, like from parking to like industrial zones to find any spots. And there were like so much snow on the side yeah. that trucks were getting stuck in these industrial zones and really trying to reverse and the streets were narrow. And mm. I, felt I ended up in t driving like to some company that I knew that they have like upper park parking at night. Mm -hmm. And even though I didn't like uh, picking up and bringing any load to them, I mm. just went there. <laughs> Pretend that they're having something for them, and this is what we do sometimes. We 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 know we have some like uh, companies where we sometimes deliver, and when we see that the parking is uh, like generally open and security is never not that strict, uh, I just put it in my GPS device, mm. and then whenever I'm in need, I I see okay in the worst scenario, <clears throat> there is a company A, and I will try to get some sleep there maybe they won't ask me to leave yeah how much sleep do you usually get in a night i mean do you have a proper night's sleep are you a short sleeper or mm. eight nine hours or six hours what's the, what's <coughs> the what, what are you averaging these days mm, approximately like six hours Six hours. Yeah, six yeah. hours. I guess when I be back to Shrek which is the minimum minimum that you need, right? Because you need to be yeah. alert again, you yeah. need to concentrate yeah, on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 but like years ago when I was working in in the Schwer transport, my routine was be would be like to uh, to drive at night, at night yeah. and of course when you go with the big loads, you are allowed to drive between ten o'clock and six in right. the morning. And then I would be going to sleep. Usually, you, you don't drive to six o'clock because um, because it would be like illegal. What if the parking you plan to park is full with overcrowded with the heavy duty oversized trucks? Then you need to go to the to, to the next one. So you can't be like that precise. Yeah. So you stop usually a bit earlier, like at five o'clock. Then I would be like going to sleep directly, like truck engine off off to bed while it's not uh, hot and it's still not hot while it's still dark and then we'll get some four or five hours sleep and then I'll be like working during the day on my social media and then like yeah, one hour nap in the evening and then off to the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was just wondering as you were, <coughs> as you were driving up to a, a truck stop and you're planning out how you're going to sort of manage your, your, your road, do you communicate with other truck drivers? So I, Sort of back in the days, you know, we had this image in our head with, you know, sort of, yeah. What's it called? CV, CB. Yeah, yeah. I still have one. You yeah. still have that. Yeah. So is that still being used? 
Yes, yeah, yeah. Especially uh, in inside like a national like a groups. I mean, mm. when I'm in Poland, uh, it's always on, and and so many people call me on the radio. And when it's on, I, I talk to the truckers on the CB radio, CB radio. But when we uh, when I enter Germany, I need to switch the channel mm -hmm. to the like uh, like a broad channel, but still for Polish for Polish truckers. So okay, okay. sometimes I do channel. it. Yes, sometimes I do it. Sometimes I don't. And what you talk and about there, like, what, what's a, what's a typical conversation? It's about just about work. Okay, this spot is full. Keep driving. There's a someone's checking, you know, uh, someone's checking um, speed. Well, <laughs> is that sort of thing? <laughs> usually, it's just exchange information about the road. Uh -huh. If everything is okay, if there are some speed cameras or the parking places, yeah. there are many. So many people say, "Oh, hi, hi, okay. hi, Vona. I have never thought that I will meet you on the road." And uh, okay. uh, so, or sometimes they recognize I, your voice. Yes, yeah, 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 they do, they do. It's like sometimes when I ask like a, if, if, if there is like a traffic jam or how big it is or mm -hmm. is it worth like trying to uh, to go take uh, some uh, deviation. It's like, oh, is, is it Miss Ivona? Oh, Miss Ivona, hello, Miss Ivona. <laughs> is that what you call Miss Ivona? Is yes, that yes, that's Ivona. funny. It's, it's very funny actually because um, like previously, uh, before I had my own truck, I was just Ivona. And once I got the truck, uh, are like you Miss every, Ivona? Yes, you, I you, you I graduated miss, to Miss yeah, Ivona. Yeah, yeah, I'm Miss <laughs> Ivona. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. So, so is it? I mean, is it a feeling of community amongst the drivers in general, or and or amongst the drivers that are from one particular region, like Polish drivers, for example? Is there a difference? Well, the uh, the common language, uh, sure. like the mother tongue, yeah. uh, makes it easier that's for sure but uh, i feel that there are some communities like inside the companies mm -hmm. and there are some communities <clears throat> inside some niche of transport like uh, tankers or mm -hmm. silo trucks or okay. like frigo trailers or yeah. schwer transport mm -hmm. so they are they, these i think these are these little groups but i i believe that uh, probably is not the the the, the relations between truckers probably are not as tight as it used to be in the 90s, I guess. When the and why the, do you think that is? I think the conditions back then were uh, harder for the truckers. The technology was not that well developed. So, so you think the, the harder the, the environment or the circumstances, the yeah. closer knit the community? Yeah, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe so. And, and people in when the, there is like um, conditions are tougher people mm -hmm. have to rely on each other when you mm -hmm. can't uh, rely on like um, service uh, or any services around you need to rely on your colleagues on people on the road this is what i've seen in uh, on the ice road in and people were yeah working. we covered in the first episode yeah, and that, i uh, that, that's quite a that's quite a niche yeah, yeah, <laughs> sort yeah, of story. Exactly. You so, were driving in ice roads yeah. in alaska and in sort of canada right yeah yeah, yeah. so w yeah. so w when the um, Truckers used to uh, fix the trucks on the road by themselves and sometimes they would need the help of the other trucker, so... Mm. Yeah, and then security is the other sort of key word that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Talk to me about security and I, I, I briefly asked you about that in the first conversation. I want to dig a little deeper though. Mm -hmm. What's it like to be by yourself in your truck at night at some foreign sort of truck stop What's it like? I mean, do you ever feel like you're unsafe? You're a little Sometimes sort of I nervous. Mm -hmm. what's, it, what's it like? Well, uh, like years ago, um, as a woman, I'm an F at two because that's adds mm -hmm. another dimension to it, maybe, right? Well, uh, years ago, in my first year of uh, driving, uh, I met a German old truck driver in Barcelona at the gate, and he told me, you know, Ivona, I traveled the world. Uh, I was like tracking on different continents. I met even in seventies. I met so many like uh, women at mm -hmm. that time, uh, like, traveling by themselves. Of course, not by the truck, but you can like be safe. But mm -hmm. you always need to trust your gut. You need to always trust your intuition. Mm -hmm. So whenever you feel not there's something odd about the place, just go to the next place because. Uh, that's the <clears throat> that's the most important thing probably for you to stay uh, safe on the road and this is what i al always do and 
I really depends. Uh, I, f I really think that it depends on the country. So in Germany, I feel more or less uh, as a woman in the cabin, I feel secure. Uh, quite mm. often, I don't feel secure about the load on my trailer. Of mm. course, on this load, on this trailer, there There's will be no, no problem. Nothing there. Here but today. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, when it comes to like curtain-sided trailers, yeah. I hear it happens very often, even in Germany. That, Have you been uh, a victim of theft before? How, uh, hopefully no. Hopefully yeah. no. That, that <clears throat> once. Um, somebody um, cut the curtain of my truck in Spain, but it was full of foil, like wrapping foil, oh, <laughs> like you know, bubble foil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, nothing, so they, nothing to get there. Yeah. yeah, so it was like nothing interesting. But I believe it depends on the country, like France. Generally, this uh, south of Europe is, is perceived as us, is yeah, okay. like more, more, more dangerous on one hand and uh, Great Britain, of course, as well. But mm -hmm. on the other hand, the, the worst thing that uh, is that, that uh, the authorities, like police, doesn't care about it. It's like... Right. It's, they don't care about it. N they, don't, they don't care about it. I feel that the truckers, as far as I like, talk to them and I see on my social media, uh, they, uh, they feel that they, they don't, nobody cares. And mm. even like at the beginning of this year, uh, I parked uh, like south of France and I was starting around four o'clock or so. It was still dark. Mm. And I noticed that uh, it, w it was uh, cold and dark. And I noticed that trucker that was parked next to me <clears throat> is going around the truck and he's having some troubles. And I went out and it turned out that uh, he had no fuel at all. Mm -hmm. Like all the fuel from his uh, truck was stolen and oh. he woke up because he was cold. He was freezing in the oh. truck. And they didn't, leave, they didn't even leave him enough fuel to get warm. Exactly, okay. exactly. So, so I said... They so used pumps and pumped the entire... Yeah, so gas. I said, uh, oh. did you call the police? No, so he said, and he was a Frenchman and another Portuguese mm -hmm. man. So mm -hmm. a few truckers uh, like um, came to, to see if other trucks are okay and so on and so forth. But like, it, there is no, there, there is, there is no sense to call them because they don't, they, they don't care. So, so let's call just for the record, so they see. Sure, I mean it's an insurance claim, and you have exactly. to exactly sort of where, where is the biggest problem, and so they called. Yeah. And uh, and they told me, oh, they told them that just to go to the petrol station and and that's it. Nobody mm -hmm. was eagle to come. And he had uh, he said that he's got no fuel at all. So he said, just get some fuel. You know, <laughs> how? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> is so, there is there a, um, security <coughs> teams or something at some truck stops, or is that sort of not not heard of? Are there certain places where they actually have security guards that that sort of take a there, there Watch are, out for what's going on there. There are like different levels of uh, secure parking lots mm -hmm. for truckers. So s s there are some parking lots like extremely safe, like for the loads like cigarettes or like uh, okay, so some it, home uh, appliances. Oh, or, 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 like iPhones okay, so so, so in other words, if you if you are dealing with that sort of like easy to steal or attractive cargo, mm -hmm. then you go to places that are particularly secure and you mm -hmm. you reserve a spot there and the company takes care of, of that or how does that work? Uh, usually companies reserve, uh, okay. mm -hmm. like uh, reserve the spot. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so you have, you can reserve or sometimes you're just searching and so sometimes mm -hmm. uh, the road changes, uh, like conditions on the road changes. So you sure. can, you, you plan yeah. to get there, but it turned out that the <laughs> autobahn is closed for yeah. a couple of hours and your working time is over and you need to find alternative. Yeah. So in, in this situation, uh, I always park like uh, literally like in Germany next to like the fuel pumps where there are cameras and, and so yeah. on and so forth to just to feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. But, but whenever needed cameras, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, assumably, you also feel safe next to other truck drivers because they're sort of, yeah, at least some sort of community feel and people watch That's out with others. If there's somebody roaming around trying mm -hmm. to cut open. Yeah. trailers then obviously the mm -hmm. the community will be alerted right yeah yeah alarmed. that's true i feel safe around the truck drivers sometimes i hear from people that all oh, these nasty truck drivers and you're such a woman amongst these nasty truck drivers but it's absolutely false i, yeah. I feel safe yeah i'm and glad I you pointed out yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i feel that uh, whatever would happening and i reach out and call for for help they would support me yeah. for sure and it's interesting i mean we're just just before we started recording, we were outside and there's there's people that recognize you, right? So they yeah. come up, they want to take selfies, pictures, whatever. Mm -hmm. 
So you feel like you people know you, recognize you. Is it just mostly yeah. Polish drivers or across the board? It's absolutely international. Because they happen to be t two Polish guys, I guess, that we just met, that were outside, that were yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just trying to take pictures with you. Yeah, but uh, but uh, it's my social media are like uh, worldwide, so I've got people yeah. following from US and also from India. And <laughs> it's amazing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how, how um, you can reach out and connect to people all around the, all around the world. And there are so many uh, truck drivers applying for the job uh, in my company from countries like uh, Pakistan or India and they are like begging for the job. It's amazing. I, I would never feel, feel think that th th that's the situation. They are like seriously like begging and saying that was their situation, that they've got like a family and their children have nothing n n nothing to eat or their like father is like seriously... Uh, oh, these are people from what? From India and Pakistan or something? Yeah. They want to come here to yeah. be a driver? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do you tell them? I just, I'm sorry, but I've got only one truck and uh, yeah. it's, it's not possible, but I was surprised. Yeah. And now you're also an entrepreneur, right? Just freshly, previously you were employed by other companies who were just, just a driver. Now you have your own company. You started your own trucking company. So tell us about how yeah. that came about and what was it like to start a new business venture? Well, this is my second truck already. So mm -hmm. I started the, the, the transport business uh, like two years ago. So mm -hmm. it's already a third year. And expanded, right? Yeah, so ex expanded. But I'm entering, uh, like re-entering Schwer Transport uh, uh, like niche industry. Because I, I used to work as a truck driver in Schwer Transport for six yeah. years. So it, it's, not, it's not new. The, like the, the practical side is not new for me. But uh, like the other side, <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's, it's very complicated, it's extremely complicated and there are so many things that I need to think about, that I need to learn, so many permits uh, in the different countries and uh, yeah. And this is particularly the transporters so heavy yeah. duty oversized transport that requires yeah. additional permits and sort of exactly. bureaucracy you have to work yourself through? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. Uh, there are so many, it's quite complicated to start uh, to, to get some like paragraphs in Germany and uh, in Poland uh, to get uh, like another permits to get the, the trailer registers. It, this is extremely complicated and time consuming because I need to go like for technical inspection of the trailer and uh, the, the, the inspector has to say that it doesn't fit. Then I need to apply for like a exceptional for like exception to get like the exception from the from the norm from the rule mm -hmm. and then uh, with this paper i can register the the, um, the trailer but uh, it sometimes it uh, takes few weeks and it may take a month right. because if there is something wrong with the paperwork uh, you need to start the procedure once again and when you do it for the first time you know i'm on the yeah. phone with so many people and uh, yeah all the time and you know Many you, people, different opinions, uh, different yeah. like uh, ways of uh, doing the job. And, uh, and you do that yourself? Or do you have a back office that takes care of all of that stuff? Or how do you uh, handle the two worlds? Uh, no, no. The three worlds, I have to say. You have a driver, you're a business owner, and you're also an influencer. And, yeah. And so that's, it, it's uh, crazy sometimes. Let's, <laughs> let's, 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 that's the let's that's see how that all fits together. <laughs> that's why these foils are still here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you need a foil person that takes off all the foil. Uh, no, no. I would, an assistant. I, no, I keep no. it for myself. I want to enjoy it. I just need to... Like, like do the most um, I need to concentrate on priorities then the pleasure yeah. so uh, coming back to your question uh, I do a lot of uh, stuff by myself uh, especially for the first time because I want to make sure that I understand uh, what I what are what are the procedures mm -hmm. uh, what are the requirements and uh, I know to, I, I, I need to understand my company from the very very bottom and this is yeah. and but, but I'm yeah but 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 I am uh, trying to, uh, to 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 probably uh, build a structure of my company. It's it's also it's very tough because I've got only two trucks, yeah. and it's too much for me taking into consideration that I also do the driving and I also do the social media and this yeah, yeah you have to some at some point you have to delegate right and it's ex exactly yeah. so it's extremely difficult to, like uh, do you like find it difficult to let moment. go of stuff do you find it difficult to let go of stuff and delegate or no, not anymore, because mm. at some point it, it was difficult, but uh, last year I was so overworked 
that at some point I, I made a really uh, big mistake that tracker can make uh, and I would never say that uh, I would never think that I could do such a stupid the most stupid mistake and while refueling like early in the morning oh yeah, yeah I remember like, in the yeah. first episode you talked about that right yeah, you, yeah. instead of putting diesel in your tank you put blue um add blue yeah yeah, yeah this is this is expensive what I did. mistake right it was extremely expensive mm. and and only that uh, like uh, taught me that uh, i can't do everything by myself i i need to hire people and i need to like delegate and since then i am like working all the time on the on like a uh, strategy and uh, like trying to give the people to more work that i normally used to do but it's it's difficult because I am also I've got great attention to details. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So by why is it, why why like this? Oh, that's good. But have you seen this? And blah blah blah. Where is that? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, but your company is still in Poland, but yes. you're doing most of your jobs in and out of Germany. Is that fair to say or? across Europe? No, or? no, no. I travel around the Europe. Okay. That's so till, till uh, this, with the first truck, I was, my aim was to travel absolutely everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I don't stick to any country. I don't, uh, I don't do, ca I don't make cabotage. I just drive from country to country, from country to country to Poland and... Uh, yeah, so you mentioned cabotage. I mean, the, the reason I ask is because there's this new EU regulation mm -hmm. that prompted a lot of companies to rethink whether mm -hmm. they should actually be stationed and have their company mm -hmm. in Poland while mm -hmm. they're driving mostly in Germany. It mm -hmm. creates all sorts of problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can elaborate on that, how that affected you and how it affected you doing your business no it doesn't affect me doesn't, at all okay. because it, it doesn't apply to me so okay. <laughs> but it was a yeah. nice, in a very nice way that you that you said it rethink <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rethink is yeah is the think that diplomatic <laughs> way of saying it <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay just in case the, the listeners recognize a, a background now is we just turn on the air, con air conditioning here yeah it's so getting, getting a little hot in the truck so we're yeah just for reference of so people that are not on the video we're at the truck we're at the truck stop in germany and it's really hot outside. The sun is coming up. It's one of these last days of summer where it's supposed to be 30 something today. Yeah. It's going to be very hot and um, we're, we're feeling it right now. And we, Actually, it's we, September. It's like 10th or 11th of September. I don't even know. It's it's like the middle of the summer and we are north for Germany. I wouldn't expect such it's, a It's a crazy weather. thing. Yeah. It's a crazy new world. Yeah. <laughs> Carbotage. So it doesn't really affect you, but it affects other people in the business. Mm. And it's sort of ironic because the aim or the goal was to improve the conditions of the driver, make things easier and so make things more fair. Mm -hmm. But it leads to all these sort of second order consequences mm -hmm. that <laughs> European regulators hadn't really thought about apparently. So do you hear a lot about that? Is that do people talk about it? Is that a no? Not a really. Yeah. Not really. Um, not at the that, uh, not at the level of the trackers. Uh, right, okay. I, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, so many like uh, actions uh, were taking trying to improve the situation of, like of the truckers like like working conditions of the truckers but uh, I, I really don't feel that something is changing so like last year there was so much talking about working conditions of the truckers right mm -hmm. now the situation the market of the market a bit changed so it's uh, nobody talks and thinks about it anymore but general tendency of the transport is still like it will be growing and uh, right now like 30 percent of trucker truckers are over 55 so soon they will be re retiring and on yep. the other hand the young generation like young truckers up to 25 years old stand only for eight nine percent of general so there will be like a lot of leaving and it's uh, a newer. disaster in the making right it's a it's a tr it's a slow train wreck they were watching yeah. in, in so real once time, the, so, to speak. so once the transport market will be like on up again on the hill there we are going to have a huge huge gap yeah, but so what do we do about the situation? What do we do about the, the sort of slow train wreck we're watching right now, where we just don't have enough people, first of all, and especially not young people, coming to the profession? What's the, what's the issue from your perspective? You've seen it from several different vantage points now, mm -hmm. right? From the vantage point of a driver mm -hmm. and from the vantage point of an entrepreneur who's mm -hmm. trying to hire drivers mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about what's going on. Well, whenever I ask truckers on my social media, they point out three things like money, lack of respect, poor working conditions. In that order? 
Money, yeah. respect, working conditions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like uh, during like uh, like last year, I feel that money went up, and uh, I feel that uh, that the salaries weren't that bad anymore as it used to be, and the salaries were, of course, it's everybody wants to make more money, but uh, like the, but uh, I feel that the money uh, wasn't that high of an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. But then it's still like poor image of the of the occupation and uh, that the working conditions that are terrible and humiliating and, and I think that that young generation like kids that grew up in more wealthy conditions that our generation or mm -hmm. uh, like previous generation grew up when they were uh, like fight fighting to get like money to 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 to, to do something with their their lives mm -hmm. right right now i feel that uh, the the kids uh, search for uh, different work and uh, life balance which is in the end of the day it's good because they are pushing the changes but it's mm -hmm. a very uh, difficult moment i i believe yeah, let's let's take one after another. So so salary, you are saying it's still an issue, but it's gone a little bit better. That's yeah. your that's a sense of what so. you're hearing mm -hmm. from the community. Mm -hmm. Respect. Let's talk about respect. Mm -hmm. How does it manifest that there's not enough respect, and what do you guys and girls as truck driver? How do you perceive it that there's and enough respect for what you do. Just let, let's come back to the uh, to the night to 2019. Mm -hmm. when it all started and uh, where all the people were asked to, to stay home and we truckers would uh, go on the road and back then we nobody knows how, uh, how dangerous the situation really is and we were working mm -hmm. and everybody was talking about the hygiene and uh, like first week all the sanitary facilities closed for tra truckers totally so on one hand do the job and we remember a situation that there was no like toilet papers, no pastas, yeah. no food, no, no fuel on the petrol stations. So do the job, but uh, just be like invisible, don't be a human, don't use uh, sanitary facilities, don't ask for water, for grocery shopping, don't ask for anything. Just do your job, and but don't be on the road even. <laughs> yeah, but in all fairness, those were extreme times, right? And and extreme times back in the days called for extreme measures, right? So well, extreme times. That's one. Of, that's one side of the argument where you could say, <coughs> well, you know, it wasn't perfect mm -hmm. under the, under the circumstances. Nobody knew how hard, how difficult, mm -hmm. how deadly this whole thing would be. So you but could argue that some people erred on the safe side, and something's mm -hmm. got to give. And then the truck drivers, for a few months, didn't experience enough respect. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's one of the things that goes by the wayside. That's the one argument. So, mm -hmm. so, so challenge that argument. <laughs> to me, it just uh, just uh, put like more contrast to the situation that exists for mm -hmm. all, all of the time. So when you talk to the uh, to the to the kids um, of truckers, not very often that admit to their colleagues that my truck, my mm -hmm. father is a truck driver. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you when you uh, even when I talk to people, um, this is what I said earlier that they say, oh, these nasty truckers. You, you mm -hmm. are like the woman, educated woman in, in, amongst these nasty truckers. Mm. Th that's the perception of mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. like all the time. I know, of course, there are some black sheep, mm -hmm. uh, but in all occupation, in every communities, there are some black mm. sheep that bring like a um, bad image. But most of us are professional. Um, all of us work hard. Okay, but but how do we? How did we end up at the situation? Why do we end up with such a bad reputation for the profession, for the people that are in it? Like, what contributed to it? It doesn't come out of nowhere. So, what contributed to? <laughs> To this bad perception that's unreal but it's not true but it's there like how did how would you be how do we end up there what's uh, what happened uh, i don't know i, I think that uh tracking job is a physical job where there's like mm -hmm. a lot of time pressure on one hand uh, like a lot of expectations on the other hand there are like long uh Along uh, working hours because truckers work up to 15 hours a day, mm -hmm. and then you've got this uh, poor quality and uh, poor quality of uh, of the parking lots very often, of the sanitary facilities or lack of 
or lack of sanitary facilities at all. And on the other hand, you are all alone on the road uh, by yourself. So it's, it's like mm -hmm. pressure, time, and so many factors that influence your job. And on one hand, you've got to you have to deliver, and uh, but. Uh, you have to take care of everything and some so, so many things happens on the road that you have no uh, influence on at all so it makes you sometimes being so extremely stressed and mm. I know that uh, all the people have stressed jobs uh, sex stressing stressing jobs but most of the people on the other hand come back home and they have uh, like uh, relationships they uh, interact with other person and if you if even i am i always just, um, joke that even if you fight with your partner or with anybody it's still uh, a way to like interact to 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 to, to relieve your feelings and embed mm -hmm. emotions and so on and so forth and trackers are, are left alone their, with their feelings exactly all, yeah. b and this is mm -hmm. like the situation for years and on the other hand you've got your kids growing home they don't see you at all so many trackers so many stories i heard about the trackers that at some point they their kids didn't recognize them at all so and all right, yeah so what you're describing is not only a physical challenge yeah. it's also emotional yeah. Emo very much emotionally challenging. And nobody job. talks about it. I feel that yeah. nobody talks about Psychologically challenging it. because you're left alone, you spend a lot of time by yourself, mm -hmm. you're away from your family, yeah. stressful situations. That's yeah. hard so, to cope with. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think that uh, maybe people who have such a judgment don't see the whole image, just see like really like one situation that perhaps mm. there was a tracker that was not nice maybe mm -hmm. he had like uh he was like angry because mm -hmm. of nobody knows what were the reasons maybe he's been like working for f like for 14 hours couldn't fight and uh, fight any parking lot then he wanted to have a shower and it turned out it's not possible yeah. because of any reason or w so many things could happen and if it's, it's been like another time that you got so frustrated that uh, yeah 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 and no, i see you and i do you know did the analogy just crossed into my head of a of a taxi driver right who always or many oftentimes are very aggressive drivers and often mm -hmm. say what's with the taxi driver he's like he's pushing me or he's not letting me in or he's doing all kinds of rude things mm -hmm. in his environment to mm -hmm. the outside world mm -hmm. yet if you're inside your passenger taxi driver is typically very nice and they're mm -hmm. talkative and they're sort of they present these two worlds like mm -hmm. internally with the passenger they're very friendly they can but what you see in the outside world, let, let, let's just say, if you, if you only saw taxi drivers mm -hmm. from the outside mm -hmm. driving, you, you'd think that they are <laughs> the worst people in the world, right? Because mm -hmm. they're rude, you know, they, they honk at you and they're, they mm -hmm. try to be somewhere and they're being aggressive. If you haven't spent any time with them in the car, riding mm -hmm. with them and actually knowing mm -hmm. a lot of people want to have conversations, Uber yeah. drivers, same way. Yeah, so, so many. Like, but here, what I'm saying is, you know, you only see truckers from the outside while they're yeah. driving, maybe while they're stressed, when they're pushing you away, when they're honking your horn, whatever. Mm -hmm. But you don't actually ever, ever spend time mm -hmm. talking to anybody like we do today. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very nice that we, we talk about. There's so many like stories just to end up this subject that there was like a trucker that uh, was banned by the company while loading or unloading because he peed somewhere around the building. Yeah. And there was like a, it, when such a situation happens, it wasn't once, it wasn't twice. I hear many stories like all the time like this. Yeah. And then when there is like somebody like, like a manager or somebody, somebody that is like uh, thinking, like trying to investigate why did it like, actually happen? Was it a tracker that was like such a bad behave that he pee somewhere around at the gate, at the ramp? Uh, like the, next to the building or maybe uh, usually it turns out when you like go deep that he's been like waiting hours in the company yeah. and he's been yeah. uh, like trying to get like the key to get to the, the access to the toilet and in the office people say that we have no toilets for truckers it's not possible in the end of the day we are humans so finally he had to do what he yeah. what he yeah, had yeah, to do yeah, yeah. and there was like a huge fight I just imagine if I was a truck driver I would be the first one to get banned for peeing <laughs> <laughs> so, so all the sympathy there yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah but do you have some ideas of what actually can be done to improve the situation I mean you've put some thought into it you yeah. actually went so far as to you've well, been working with the European Parliament yeah. you've recorded videos mm -hmm. so help me figure out your thinking around what can be done to improve the situation both for the drivers as well mm -hmm. for for the public to help them understand mm -hmm. better what's 
actually going on, what the problems are? I think that the problem is complex and the yeah. uh, actions need to be like complex as well. So it's not the only one thing no, that no, needs no to be done. No one simple solution, okay. Yeah that's, the, 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 yeah, that's for sure that uh, the first thing that needs to be done is it's, the, it's, it's got to be regulated uh, by, by law that the trackers uh, have a right to, to have the access to sanitary facilities on the places where we, they load and, and, outload, uh, uh, and unload. Uh, but of course, uh, legal actions, it, it takes a long time. But, uh, but what I believe and what I've been working on like for a year already is an app uh, that would be a tool uh, for the trackers to rate the places where we uh, mm -hmm. spend some time. So work, it's our loading, unloading, uh, parkings, petrol station services, and so on and so forth. So, but because I believe when your company has uh, in some important ranking is at the bottom, mm -hmm. then there is information for you mm -hmm. as a like managing director, as an owner or yeah. Like clean up your act, you yeah. You have an yeah, exactly. if, if it's, so yeah. you're talking, you're asking for transparency, you're really yeah. for like a black and white, yeah. sort of very objective. Here's a way to yeah. rate the mm -hmm. service mm -hmm. that these facilities are providing. Exactly. So on one hand, mm -hmm. it will give an option to, it will give the information to the companies that something's wrong there in your company, mm -hmm. and uh, and on the other hand, the the one that have like the best practice, I want to promote them. So the the the, the highest in the ranking, uh, like the companies, I want to see them. I want to talk to them to give like the good example for the other because there are so many companies that do it well. So mm -hmm. it is possible, but it's a matter of caring for other people. Yeah, you pharmacists. And, and let's 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 sort of switch gears because you have experienced a situation in the U.S. Right, where it's diff different circumstances and there are some really, really good things to model mm -hmm. the Euro European landscape after. Mm -hmm. And one of the things being that there are these truck stops that are really competing yeah. for the attention yeah. and for the sort of business mm -hmm. of companies, not mm -hmm. just truck drivers, but companies mm -hmm. through incentives of yeah. tanking cards and, and all, all sorts of things. So tell, talk, talk to us about what are some of the good ideas you've, you've seen there that are worth looking at here in Europe as well? Well, uh, first of all, um, the, the model of uh, like uh, American like truck stops is it's, it's a bit different, but uh, w w the, the, the thing that I loved about it is that, that truckers have their exactly like loyalty cards mm -hmm. and whenever they re we refuel and stick to uh, one uh, like brand, then uh, you very, very uh, quickly you reach like the highest level and you have like free showers. Mm -hmm. which you can reserve from the app so you doesn't have to you don't have to go to the petrol station like to the truck stop and when there is a queue mm -hmm. you don't need to stay sp spend like an hour you just reserve and once your shower is ready then you get uh, like uh, an information on your update you can come it's it's open it's it's clean uh, you're good to go just enjoy yeah. so of course a european market is completely different and but still uh, we, we can say we can search for problems why we cannot provide European trackers with uh, proper like normal working conditions because this this is the, the things that I, I, th that's the very important we are not talking about the luxury we are talking about the basic necessity the basic exactly yeah. mm -hmm. I always uh, say that it would be I, I would love to see such an experiment that in one that, that in the transport company or any other company, uh, you one day in the morning you shut all the toilets, you shut all the water, and you would see how quickly all these workers, all people working in the office, would say there are no conditions for us. We are yeah. going home. Yeah. The company and doesn't provide us with the basic human rights. We are going home. Are we any other people? Sure, but let me understand. How often does that happen? Like, so we're talking about. Let's let's talk about Germany f first. In mm -hmm. Germany, how many times has it happened that you go to a truck stop and there's no, there's no facilities there? Uh, well, is that still a thing? When it comes to truck stops, there mm -hmm. is like all. There are always like uh, toilets and showers. Mm -hmm. Most of the time are dirty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sometimes more dirty. Sometimes less dirty. But uh, uh, I am talking mostly about the uh, uh, companies where we load and unload. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So this uh, these are the places when we sometimes uh, spend like half a day 
because usually it should be like one or two hours of the whole process should uh, last up to two hours. That's an important but point. So I'm, I'm, I've mentally, I've been very focused very much on truck stops because we are a truck stop, but yeah. you're actually talking about when you arrive at a facility and you're waiting for your truck exactly. to unload, unload it and, yeah. and, and so forth. Yeah. That's when most of these problems occur because there's exactly. nothing there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to truck stops, like the biggest problem is that usually it's only like two showers, maybe three showers and it's not enough. So mm -hmm. uh, when you are after 15 hours of work and uh, you prepare something for yourself uh, in the truck to eat because you can't eat all the time in the restaurants because it's costly and mm. it's, it's not healthy. You need to remember the truckers spend their mm. entire life on the road. So you, you can't live out like eating whole, whole time in the, yeah. in the restaurant. And then uh, you go to the petrol station, to the truck stop, and you have to wait half an hour, 40 minutes for the, your shower. And then you have your shower, you're back, and it's, uh, it's, you have all, all over like nearly two hours lost in like being a human. And mm. then uh, you have only like nine hour break and you have to get up earlier to get ready, to get the truck ready, make sure that everything is okay to make some coffee, maybe make some breakfast and you are ending up sleeping like five or six hours a day only. So I think that, that there should be more showers and they should be cleaned after every person um, using it. Yeah. yeah. And then going to these facilities or the, the places that you actually do business with where you transport stuff to. What about there? Like, are there good examples of... Yeah, yeah, there are. Where, Absolutely. So tell me about how that looks like then. <coughs> First the of all, they they <laughs> they are respectful with your time yep. so ideally they have some sort yeah. of regulated system where mm -hmm. the delivery you mm -hmm. have a time window and it's enabled by apps and so forth where yeah. your your time is being spent wisely as opposed to waiting around mm -hmm. for your truck to get unloaded for five hours yeah. so yeah. talk to me about how that ideally looks like what's a, what's a good experience and what's a bad experience okay so uh, just to give some ideas mm -hmm. uh, yeah so first of all when truckers arrives there is like a marked entrance for the truckers because very often there is like one entrance for the cars and the other for the truckers but mm. not of, but it's not very clear so like the first like mark mark entrance and then there are some spots for the parking so you're entering the company and you see that you don't have to like be parked on the side of the road to go and check in to the office yeah. and then enter you just enter and there are like few spots uh, which are marked again that this is like a parking LKV office and then the, the, the office where you unmail them uh, is still marked yeah. so there are like uh, you know and, and you let me ask see. you to this day this is still a very analog manual process where you get out of the truck you go into an office an mm -hmm. unmailing's office you go yeah. in there and you register and you show up your paper yes. or is there any form that you're using currently that's digitized where it's a digital way of showing up with your app, they know when you're coming mm -hmm. and all of this digitized. How far advanced is that? Uh, like the bigger companies, uh, the bigger companies uh, have their like, system where you check in on the computer. But to yeah. be honest, I, I feel that truckers prefer to come and talk to person. Really? Uh, yes. They because prefer on, to talk to a person? Yes, because... Even uh, if they have a digital, adva a digital alternative? Yes, because uh, very often like one load, one order goes um, uh, sold by few expeditions. And there are so many different numbers, like reference numbers, that very often when you check in, your refer reference number is wrong. You need to get another one. Mm. And then you mm -hmm. need to reach out to your dispatch. And when you work in a big company, you don't have uh, the, you don't connect with your dispatch by your, by your phone, but with, by your, some uh, computer, onboard computer. So you need to send a message, then you need to mm -hmm. uh, wait. And sometimes it's, it takes a while and mm -hmm. you lose your like uh, place in a, in a queue. So, and the other hand is still, it's what I said earlier, we are all alone by the time. So uh, the, like when we check in, this is like the only chance for us to interact with an, another human. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting aspect <coughs> that I hadn't really considered. So you actually, it's a little bit of a relief to be yeah. able to talk to a person as opposed to having to yeah, use yet yeah. another app for doing yeah, something. Yeah, we, we are in the huh. truck. We are in this cabin, cabin by ourselves all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's that, that's why uh, when I uh, stop somewhere on the road and I sometimes when I go to the restaurants, I check the uh, like the rating of the restaurants that is like on the truck truck stop, and very often. As often as uh, like comment, uh, comments uh, about the food 
is how uh, nice is the crew. The if personnel or the, the, the exactly, people that serve exactly, the food? Exactly, uh -huh. and very uh -huh. often I see the comments that uh, you are all alone by yourself and these people are so nice, it's like worth going there because when you go out the truck there are some nice people waiting, waiting for you. So when yeah. they bring you food they say a nice world. Mm -hmm. uh, word. So this is something that probably most of the people don't think because uh, most. That's of the interesting people because I do talk to a lot of folks, especially startups that are in the digital space that are creating software and digital mm -hmm. tools to enable digital processes, right? Including the delivery mm -hmm. into warehouses by mm -hmm. trucks and how to make this whole experience completely digitized and mm -hmm. sort of flawless. Yeah. While it will save you time, it's not going to solve the issue of. Yeah. You know, there's still a human element to exactly. the driver that actually sort of appreciates mm -hmm. being able to talk, being able to talk to another human being. Yeah, exactly. And that's sometimes over, uh, underrated. Yeah. You feel lonely. You feel frustrated. Sometimes yeah. uh, you have like a really like uh, sad time of your life, or you have problem in relationships because you are always away, and and uh, your other half, like the wife is angry that they are always on the road and maybe she's facing some problems with the kids because father is not there and she is all alone so she is angry with you and you are angry because you know they ask you to to be faster and you can't be any faster because there is a traffic or mm -hmm. uh, they, are, they are like tired and they stop on the road on the on the parking to have some rest and they, the, the, the dispatch is pushing why are you staying you need to go and so yeah. on and so forth so there is like pressure from from everywhere so I think I believe that it's human factor on the road and being like professional and nice to to to, to the truckers is is really really important and underappreciated. I feel that people, like modern people, oh, we've got a place here. You want to go with me? <laughs> Did you buy a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, people um, uh, don't. Uh, appreciate how much people living at home they don't appreciate how uh, their luxurious situation when you wake up uh, at night and you need to pee and you don't need to wear a jacket and the boots and everything you're a very luxurious situation when you uh, shower and you don't need to be afraid to touch the walls not to be afraid that you're going to get some some virus or anything you're in a luxurious situation when you come back home and uh, and you can cuddle somebody you can talk to somebody you can argue with somebody this yeah. is luxurious yeah yeah but at the same time there there are issues or problems that will be solved through technology or through better legislation or through making the sanitary conditions better there's other problems that will never be solved like the ones you're just mentioning you still regardless of how the the, the 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 trucking job will evolve there will always be long stretches of time where you're by yourself on the road mm -hmm. isolated from your family and not of a lot of human interaction so i'm trying to figure out what what actually realistically can be done what's a good what's something good to aim for and to solve mm -hmm. and what are some others we just can't solve it's just it comes with the job and you either do it or you don't nobody is forced to do it but if you're going into it you should know what you're getting into Let's be straightforward about it. Let's, let's talk about a few things that are obviously solvable. What are some of the things that you think, if you had a magic wand, mm -hmm. <laughs> you could use it, what would you use it for? How would you en enact a change right now? What would, you, what would help you most? And what's actually a solvable problem, as opposed to the, the parts that are never going to be solved? Like isolation from your family, for example. I think that, first of all, like isolation, what would help would be like cheap internet. Mm -hmm. internationally because uh, right now the truckers uh, struggle to to have like more uh, internet they pay very high bills the truckers who travel all around all, all around the europe yeah. have um, like very expensive internet so you're thinking wi-fi connections for example at the truck stop while exactly. you're parking yeah. so currently that's not an option at all yeah. right yeah right yeah. now you're on but your on your plan and you're using Data. There are some, but only like inside the restaurants. Yeah. So of course well, you can be like uh, have like intimate conversation with your partner when mm -hmm. you are like in the truck stop. Yeah. So it would be nice that the, if the uh, Wi-Fi covered all the parking spots. Mm -hmm. So this is like the first thing. Not very complicated. Probably not that expensive. Well, we're of course. Everything I'm talking about Germany, you. and we're we're complaining about just regular usage of internet. Oh, you've got phone. so you've got such a slow internet. Yeah, here. I don't know. So I'm not I'm not I'm okay. not very optimistic that it's going to be solved anytime soon. With the magic wand, it may be, but <laughs> well, you don't have that for so. Okay, that's that's one. So so sort of 
more digital connectiveness allows mm -hmm. you to sort of mitigate some of that isolation. Mm -hmm. So that that would be one that's that's maybe on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but the other thing probably would be like better organization of the whole transport process. Mm -hmm. I, I feel as a, as a as a owner of the transport companies that so that sometimes uh, clients clients uh, don't respect the time of a trucker mm -hmm. and the truck at all they like order transport and uh, they feel that they can like um, take as much time of a truck and uh, and the trucker as as they want because they uh, order a truck and if it takes six hours this is how it uh, this is what it takes here so mm. i believe that that the the optimizing the process of loading and unloading would be would be a lot another thing would be i feel that this the sanitary facilities are really a big issue uh, and of course more parking places because it's it's a nightmare seriously mm. it's a nightmare for us sometimes i feel like crying when i'm after all day long i'm tired because i've been working so hard and it's so ma so often you have to put the straps on the load to secure the cargo and this is a physical job mm. and sometimes you are in such a, a time pressure so uh, you don't even have time to, to to eat properly during the day and in the evening you're going from parking lot to parking lot to parking lot it's like i don't exaggerate right now sometimes it's 10 parking lot and you feel no. like crying because you, so, you know because it's yeah. like yeah, nobody yeah. wants you it's like nobody wants you you're not here you're not there you know you take there. it personally yeah exactly. Even though you shouldn't but it's natural it's a it's a human thing but how on an average month if you're on the road the entire month how, how often does that happen like just to give me an idea of how common that problem is where you're it's actually ready day. you have to take a break you have to find a parking spot and it's you're like ready every day. It's every, every day. Every single day. Yeah, it's every day. It's it's mm. about how how if it's like for the uh, second or third time or for the ninth time you mm. will find the spot. But it's happened every uh, every day, every yeah. day. Unless you are in the uh, in the area where there is no so much transport, no so much traffic coming. So of course it, it happens. But when you work like on the main transport corridors on the on the autobahns, yeah. uh, sometimes it's. It's, it's, it's terrible. So sometimes I feel like I stop finally somewhere on the side of the road and I don't feel like uh, brushing my teeth. I don't feel like uh, like mm. washing. I just I just feel so tired that I just, want to go yeah. I just want to go to sleep yeah. all dirty and so on. But I just yeah. don't want to go any, anywhere, just yeah. whatever. Yeah, well, I think this is a good transition towards this, this whole question around we see you on Instagram and on YouTube and in your videos. How how real, how realistic is, if I've never seen you in person, if I've never seen your truck in your circumstances, and I just watch your videos, how, mu how much of that is the reality of your daily life? Because you're in these two worlds, you want to show mm. a shiny side with your new truck and your upbeat, and there's a lot of those moments, but you, you're also describing moments of despair and of frustration mm -hmm. and of just wanting to crash. And th those are the times where you typically don't have your camera on. Mm -hmm. I would assume like how much of what we see is actually, is actually reality that mm -hmm. we see on your social channels, not mm -hmm. of just of you, but of other similar influences as well. And do you feel an obligation to show the real unadulterated mm -hmm. truth or do you want to project an image? Do you want to build mm -hmm. a brand? These are the two worlds that you have mm -hmm. to straddle. Talk to me about how you reconcile these two these two worlds well in the past i would show only the bright side that's that's for sure because mm -hmm. i had this like a uh, feeling that people are fed up with their own uh, problems with their own stresses so they don't come uh, on my for my on my social media to to have to see any other they, want, they don't want to see my a lot problems. of negativity probably right exactly. it's going to drag them down it's they're looking for something upbeat so, right yeah, okay, yeah 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 but uh, with time when i'm like older and i'm more uh, self-confident i've got a better understanding of, on the of the industry i feel that uh, it's it's my obligation to to show uh, the reality to to show the perspective of the truckers so of course i still try to adapt the content to the platform example uh, like instagram loves beauty loves this, all these um, beautiful pictures but uh, but when it comes to for example like TikTok or uh, or YouTube I, I show the, all these nasty things on YouTube because it mm. takes time to not to 
to, to give you the context, uh, it takes time. So YouTube on my social media is the one platform wh where I take time to, 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 to talk about the problem, to show mm -hmm. the problem. Uh, so often I, I take the camera into the showers, of course, no, 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 no <laughs> I don't uh, record and I show how I shower, <laughs> but uh, I show the showers or sometimes I, I show uh, when I'm rushed, when I'm preparing something quickly to eat and <laughs> recently, uh, not recently, uh, recently I, uh, I published a video, I was like cooking something and I was still recording something and publishing and taking care of the GPS and so on and so forth and suddenly all my like dinner ended up like between the seat and the, and the floor and everything was so dirty and I was hungry and I was like in, in the rush I was like whoa mm. I don't know if I was what was the reason I was more angry it was that I'm hungry and I've got no food or that my uh, truck is now so dirty yeah. <laughs> and it all fell down into this tight spots yeah, the, yeah. so uh, yeah depending on the platform but uh, I can't show it too much because I also I also see that if I uh, concentrate too much on one problem and I uh, keep posting about it, people uh, after a few posts already are fed up. They say, I don't, don't nag that much. Uh, That's the reality and so on and so forth. So I need to mix. Yeah. So, uh, so the, 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 my strategy is that you like hunt attention with all these beauty pictures. And, uh, and you disperse and it with the with the reality. Yeah, <laughs> and okay. in the background, in the uh -huh. background, you you, also, you send yeah. the message, because if you mm -hmm. if you show only this nasty stuff, nobody wants to see it. Yeah, but I if mean. you attract their attention with some such yeah. a nice, beauty, shiny yeah. pictures, yeah. then there's something. Okay, okay. So so, considering everything that we've talked about today, about all the trouble, all the 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 the, the sort of challenges but also the good, the good parts about your job. Honestly, like <laughs> on the bottom of your heart, if you had a teenager or like a young person that has dreams just like you had back in the days when you went into the profession, could you honestly recommend someone that's young that wants to start a profession, wants to start in trucking? You, would you honestly recommend it? And if so, under what circumstance? What is there to consider? to make that move today 2023 and the years to come yeah absolutely and the, to me the most important reason is to find yourself because in this our society when there are like so many disturb disturbance or, or disturbance all around you and the social media pre presents very often such a fake image of perfect people and uh, what was like the most important to me when I started tracking is that how I was gaining with this job, with learning, gaining my self-confidence. Mm -hmm. And I was, cut, uh, out, I was cut from the all the world. So at that point I stopped shopping. I felt that I don't need like really anything that I would do when I was like living um, like any other people mm -hmm. and w when you are a young person and you see all these uh, very often fake influencers then you think that there's something's wrong with you and you should uh, look differently and so on and so forth so i believe like for the young person first of all you find yourself you can find out who you really who you really are and meanwhile you make your money uh, uh, if you still don't have family, you don't have children, you have a chance to travel the world and see the real image of the places, not like when you are mm -hmm. a tourist. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, 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 uh, have, you, you can observe how different countries organize things different, different culture. And uh, yeah. Uh, like 100 percent 100 percent especially for women because uh, not only men are impacted uh, by this all not realistic uh, image of a man but i believe that uh, mostly uh yeah, girl, uh, girls mm -hmm. have like really i wouldn't be I, I, w I would hate to be teenagers right now teenager right now because mm -hmm. like looking like watching social media 
it yeah, I can, be like I can see how a lot of a lot of young folks are super confused. It's, it's really about difficult. The world. Uh, yeah. And when you are driving, on one hand, you are all alone, so nobody tells you how should you behave, what, how should you uh, look like, and what should you do. You just have your the delivery. You need to organize everything by yourself, and you go and you drive such a big truck. So you gain confidence. Of okay, course, yeah, it's that's tough. A, that's yeah. an underestimated um, yeah. aspect to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you make your money. That's quite important. You can travel the world always, of course, but you need money yeah. to do that. And here you make money. Why and it's driving? and it's not said uh, that you need to be a truck driver forever. Mm -hmm. Companies uh, love um, to uh, employ to hire the truckers after a few few years of working to the office and then you've got a better understanding of the like the very bottom of the transport and you can go higher and higher yeah, yeah. it's a good good entry point mm -hmm. so to speak yeah yeah I, I i i've got my own transport company and when i was like going for the first trip I borrowed like 100 euro from my sister because I spent all the money on the uh, on the, on the exams to get the mm -hmm. driving license. I had no money at all, and now I've got a second truck. So, yeah. and I'm an influencer. And I guess if I uh, if I kept my first job, which was teaching children, may maybe maybe, but probably I wouldn't have. <laughs> so no, re company. no regrets on your side. Oh, absolutely no, yeah. absolutely no. I found my place F thanks yeah. to tracking. I, I found myself, I gained my confidence, uh, I, I made my money and I'm st still like uh, growing. So to me, yeah, it's, that, it's just wonderful. That's a, <laughs> that's a wonderful... It's tough, but it's yeah, tough. It's, uh, it's tough. But it's a wonderful way to end the conversation. You're finished on a, on a very positive note. And I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you're literally, you have to continue your journey. So <laughs> I'm back home <laughs> and you're continuing on. You're going back to Poland. That's so you true. Have a, a long let's drive, get, long drive in front of you. Yeah, let's get this track registered. But it's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, and hopefully you have a have a safe trip back to Poland with your beautiful, shiny new truck from Volvo, <laughs> the Goldhofer um, <sighs> trailer. Ah, <sighs> fantastic stuff. Beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna take a, a, a small um, tour around and show me around a little bit before Great. before we leave. But we wanna thank you very much for the conversation. Very Fame. very much appreciate it again. Awesome conversation. I have a feeling that's not the last time that we speak. So maybe, yeah, me too. <laughs> maybe next time, different format, not podcast, not video. Maybe on stage somewhere. Who knows? Thank you There's so much. Ample opportunity. So Thank maybe you. next time. Until. I am very open-minded. I'm open to everything. Thank you so much. It's it's pleasure talking to you, and I I'm thank you for like getting interested in the subject to to go like deep uh, deeper and deeper to to show a little bit of perspective of of a tracker. I think it's very mm, important. So. Thank You're you. You're very welcome. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs>